Hey everyone, Dan here. I wanted to do a quick tutorial on using some of the masking tools in On One Photo 10. And I want to thank Pat Cassidy, one of our customers, for sending this photo in for this demonstration. A really common scenario is removing a sky through trees or branches. And the techniques I show you here will also be the same thing they'll use for hair. Hair and tree branches and uh, wedding veils and things like that are all kind of the same, same scenario. There's a couple things you want to do before we actually get to the masking. The first thing I want to do is I want to take the photo and I'm going to go to enhance and I want to make sure that the brightness and contrast and color are all set the way I want before I go to work. A lot of the masking tools are based on color so you want to have a good difference in the color and the contrast between your foreground and your background. If the photo is low in contrast and muddy they can't do as good of a job. All right, so I open it up here. I'm just going to click the auto button in the color and tone pane. You can see how that kind of makes it pop. It adds a little bit more contrast to it. I might turn the detail up just a little bit to taste. There we go. I'm going to grab the crop tool. I'm going to level this photo really quickly here. I'll just grab the leveler. I'll drag it across the eave, something I know that's supposed to be straight and level. There we go. That rotated it just a little bit and then I'm just gonna grab the perfect eraser and I'm gonna get rid of this little sprinkler head here that's kinda of driving me nuts alright cool now we're ready to mask the next step is picking out the background that we want to use to replace the sky with this is actually a pretty tricky part it's important when you pick a background that it's going to be realistic with your photo now this is kind of an overcast day it looks like it's pretty late in the day as well you can see there's some blue in the sky so what I really want to do is try to pick a sky that's going to complement this photo if I pick something that was a deep dark blue it's not going to look very realistic so I need to pick something that's around the same time of day a little blend in and look real now you can use a photo of your own if you've created one or captured one I'm going to use one of the built-in ones so I'm just going to open up the browser over here on the left go to the extras tab go into on one extras we include a bunch of backgrounds and borders and textures to help you out we'll go into the backgrounds and then to the skies you know see how there's a bunch of skies that we include so I'm just gonna look through here until I find one that I think will complement this photo I think maybe this one looks pretty good and I can just drag it on top of my photo and I'm going to add it as a layer there we go you can see when it comes in it's a little bit smaller than my image you can make it match just by grabbing the transform tool and then clicking right up here in the fill canvas button and that'll size it and center it on my photo automatically And then in my layer stack, I'm just going to drag it underneath my photo. What this does is it allows me while I'm masking to actually see the results while I work. I'm going to close the browser on the left to give me all the room I want to work on. Click on the layer that we want to mask. And I'm going to start off with the masking brush. That's the first tool in the mask section. And I want to make sure I turn on what's called the perfect brush. You can see right up here there's a little brush with a little magic sparkle on it. I'm going to click on that and turn it on. The perfect brush is where I start with just about any masking chore. The perfect brush works by painting away the color under the center of the brush. You notice there's a little minus symbol in the middle of that. As you click and hold, it's going to sense that color and it's going to start to paint away whatever is underneath that little minus sign. And it's going to respect any colors that are different from that minus sign. So you can see as I brush around here, it's painting away just the white of the sky, but it's leaving all the other colors. It just kind of stops automatically at the edge. Now this tool works really well when I've got a big area I want to work on. But if I need to brush through something like a branch of a tree, there's a secret. If I hold down the control key on a Windows computer or the command key on a Mac, it stops sampling that color under the center of the brush and it just holds on to whatever the last color was. So I'm just going to hold down, I have it to be on a Mac, so I'll hold down the command key. And now it will stop that sampling and it just paints away whatever the last color was that I remembered, which happens to be kind of that white color in the sky. Now you can let go of that key and click again and it'll start sampling again automatically. So right in here, the sky was getting a little bit more gray. It was further away from that white color. I'm just going to click again, hold down that 
Command or Control key and keep on painting. And you're just going to repeat that process. Click on a color you want to get rid of. Hold down the Command key or the Control key, depending on the platform you're on, and paint through the area you want. There we go. I'm just going to keep doing that. Just keep clicking and holding, clicking and holding to start to paint away more and more of the white and the gray in the sky. Now on a photo like this, using the perfect brush is a good starting point, but it's not going to be your finishing point, especially over here on the right hand side. So we'll come back to that here in a minute. I'm just going to continue to use that technique of the perfect brush with the clicking and holding to get rid of the majority of the white of the sky. You can always make your brush bigger and smaller. I'm using the left and right bracket keys on my keyboard. I find those to be the fastest way to change my brush size. Or if you're using a Wacom pressure sensitive tablet, that'll work too. You can always quickly change your brush size. You can even set your scroll wheel on your mouse to change that if you want to in the preferences. All right, there we go. I've got most of it. There's a little bit right here between the chimney and that gable. All right, so that's got most of it done here just using a single tool, just using the masking brush with that perfect brush option turned on. But it's not perfect yet. You'll notice, especially over here on the right, there's still a lot of white wrapping around through those tree branches. That happened to be where the brightest part of the sky was, and it's actually causing the tree branches to flare a little bit. Uh, so you get some odd colors, some chromatic aberrations and such going on up there. To fix that, we're going to use the refine brush. So I'm going to go down. The refine brush is the first tool in the refine mask section. I'll click on that and then I will just come over and I'll start painting over those areas that didn't get done as well as I'd like to. One tip, make sure that you have the color decontamination option turned on. What that'll do is it'll actually not only mask the layer, but it'll also change the color in the photo itself so that it blends in with the new background better. All right, so now watch. As I paint along here with the refine brush, we'll just kind of mark up an area that we want to work on. Don't do the whole thing at once. Just pick a section and then let go. And voila, you see how it's removed that white fringing around the trees. Just keep doing that. Again, don't try to do the whole thing at once, just kind of do it block by block. There we go. I'll just keep doing that a couple more times until I get all of this done. That's looking better. Now, one of the things a lot of people don't know is that you can actually brush with the refine brush more than once over the same area and it will continue to improve the results. So this is looking good, but you know, I bet if I brush that same area again, it will bring back even more color and detail in those trees. Sometimes you can brush over something two, three, four times and continue to get better results out of it. There you go. So you can see how the trees got darker and blended in and look more natural against the sky now. Let's do these one more time too and see how much better they get. There we go. That's looking pretty good. I could do the same thing. I could use that refine brush over here on these tree branches too. We can see a couple little spots where they have some white halos around them. You don't have to be super precise when you paint with this tool either. It automatically finds the edges. It knows what you're trying to do and only masks the area where there's a mask. There we go. All right, I'm going to fast forward here a minute. I'm just going to brush through the sky on the left a little bit just to clean it up a little bit. You don't have to watch the whole process. 
All right, when I get done with all of my refining, the next step I want to do is just to take a look at my mask in black and white mode so that I can see if there's any big errors I want to fix. You can do that just by hitting the O key on your keyboard. And it actually shows you the black and white rendition of the mask. And it can be handy to look for either spots that you missed or spots that you need to fix. So in this case, I actually got a little bit of one of these, I think it's what you would call a gable. I'm just going to grab the masking brush. I'm going to turn off the perfect brush option just so that I can simply paint things back in. And I'll change my mode from paint out to paint back in. And I can use this to paint back in any little mistakes that I made. And you can use any combination of the masking tools in Photo 10 at any time to refine these edges. You know, the line mask tool would actually be a really handy tool along some of these ridge lines. I could use that just the same as I'm using the brush to clean up a couple of my mistakes. There's also a little spot in here that I missed. If I zoom in a little bit, you can kind of see a little bit of haze right here. I'll just turn the perfect brush back on switch back to paint out and I can actually paint in the mask preview mode so I can clean up any of those little spots as well that I might have missed in here. All right, there we go. Let's go back to fit to screen. We'll turn the preview on or off and there you go. There's your results. I'm going to turn the sky on and off so you can see it against just a transparent background just like that. All right, there you go. So the basic steps again, start off by making sure your photo is adjusted for brightness and contrast. Select a background that's going to look realistic with your photo and put it behind it on its own layer. Then start off with the masking brush with the perfect brush option turned on and paint through the areas you want to remove. If you need to paint over tree branches, hold down the control key or the command key when you do it so that it doesn't accidentally paint away the tree branches. Then in the areas that didn't mask, perfectly with a uh, perfect brush, use the refine brush and paint over it two or three times until you get the edges just the way you want. All right, there you go. Thanks for watching. I hope it helps everybody.